All right, got another video today. I'm gonna go over setting up Android on a Raspberry Pi. And we're gonna install Atmo Tube and Planet Watch. Tried to run the Atmo Tube on an old cell phone. It didn't get good results. Uh, not full rewards. Just a lot of issues. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is download um, Consta Kang. This is the Android version for the Raspberry Pi. Just choose which Pi you have and get the newest version. This works much better than uh, using a phone. Uh, since I did this, I've seen 100% rewards uptime for... Uh, the last two weeks. I'm gonna have to download a couple things. Um, once we get this, we're gonna use Bellina Etcher. Use this in a number of videos. It's what we're gonna write the image to our SD card. So we'll just download this while we're waiting for the Android to do download. And we'll get that installed. Yeah, running this on a, a phone is less than ideal. I was only submitting maybe 10 to 15 shares a day on the phone. And with this setup, um, I'm submitting the maximum. Android file is not small, but uh, just get that download. I'm gonna pull it out of the zip file, and we're just gonna drop it on the desktop, and then we're going to uh, use the etcher to write that to our SD card. So far, I've seen um, about two dollars and thirty cents a day from this when you're getting full rewards not too bad I think the device was $150 uh, whereas when it was running on a phone I'd see maybe 25 cents a day so we're also going to need the Google uh, Play Store so we're going to download the G apps and uh, let's just open G apps we're just going to get the newest uh, version. And we'll download it for ARM and the 11.0 and the Pico style. We just need its basic functions. This isn't too big. Just get that downloaded. We're going to save it. We're going to write this to a USB stick. And that's how we're going to copy it over to the Android once we get it installed. We'll have to boot into recovery mode to install this. Uh, we'll go over that once we get through the installation. And we're going to run this split screen. I found that um, if you didn't run it split screen, you would not get any rewards. Maybe submitting one, two shares an hour, if that much. But if you ran it split screen, even on a phone, you'd see uh, much better rewards. Still not 100%, but um, running it here with the Raspberry Pi in split screen, and you can watch it update it um, every 10, 15 seconds or so. This is all sped up. This will take a lot longer than uh, you're seeing here in the video. But we'll just get that written, and then we're going to pull it out and pop it into our Raspberry Pi. These are 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4, 4, pardon me. Uh, I think if you get a kit, they probably run about $100. Um, so for, 
for this setup with the Atmo tube itself and a hundred dollar Raspberry Pi that comes with the case and everything you're looking at about two fifty uh, two dollars and thirty cents a day so about a hundred days 110 days ROI so now we got it written to the SD card I'm going to pull it out and pop it in basically this setup here is um, a 7 inch touch uh, screen I'm not sure I've got a, quite a few of these laying around I use them for monitoring mining rigs um, different things like that it's nice to have the touch screen not a lot of power and once you get it running, uh, this particular model has a switch to turn the backlight off. So you can cut your power usage way down. Uh, I run these over PoE. And my switch tells me that it runs around 7 to 8 watts. Uh, and that's with the screen on. You can cut the screen off and cut that down a little bit. But essentially, essentially nothing few cents a day in power so now we're going to go through the setup basically all the standard stuff set the date set the time set your time zone <coughs> excuse me get yourself connected to Wi-Fi and uh, just complete the setup you have to accept the terms and so on and so forth And once you run through that, we're going to need to turn on developer mode. And just go into your settings and you find your about and your build number and just tap it until it turns developer mode on. All right, so once we got developer mode on, we're going to go into developer settings and the first thing we're going to look for is uh, the power switch setting make sure that it's set up to um, have GPIO pin 21 uh, set up for power button you can also set up volume up and down there's not a lot of need for that in this case and we're going to turn on USB debugging. So now we know that the uh, GPIO pin is set up to be the power button. So we're going to plug one into ground here. And one end we're going to uh, put into pin 21. GPIO pin 21. And you can see once we uh, make that connection, we get our power options. And we're going to go back into developer. And we need to find a setting for advanced power settings. And this is going to want, this is what's going to let us uh, boot into recovery mode. And recovery mode is what you'll need to install the Google Play Store G apps that we downloaded. <coughs> so you can scroll through or you can search. Uh, I'll put some info in the, the description too, so make it a little bit easier. But we're basically just looking for the advanced power options and we got to enable that. <coughs> Excuse me. So once you search those out, um, get it enabled, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to jump those pins, uh, jump 21 to ground, give it a restart with our new settings. Yeah, we're going to let it boot up. Alright, 
Let's come back online now. So we have our USB drive here with the G apps that we downloaded. And we're going to just open up the file manager and we're going to copy that over to our downloads folder on the Raspberry Pi. Let's make sure we have access to it when we uh, boot into recovery mode. Alright, now we're going to jump uh, that pin again. Hit restart and we're going to choose recovery. That's going to boot us into the um, lineage recovery and you're going to have to swipe right to uh, allow access. We're going to go into the downloads folder. Well, we're going to tap install first then we'll find our downloads. I'm going to select that gapps.zip uh, file that we copied over. This is significantly sped up. This will take a moment. Um, but we're going to get that installed. And after that, we're going to use the wipe DAVIC function. It's that left button there. We're going to swipe and we're going to reboot. So this should uh, restart right into the uh, main OS and we'll have uh, Play Store installed. It's not going to show much about Play Store. Everybody knows how to uh, insert your email and password. So there you have it. You've got Play Store installed on Android 11 on a Raspberry Pi. It's going to take a moment to load, but from here all you do is sign in and you can look at the Atmo 2 video. I can put a link up in the top here because everything's the same from here. You're just going to uh, install the Atmo 2 app. And you're going to install the Planet Watch app. Set them both up. And you're ready to rock and roll. <coughs> I'm going to go grab uh, the Raspberry Pi that this is running on and bring it down show you what the uh, complete looks like. So in my uh, use case here that there is a uh, PoE adapter. So what I do is I, um, I have PoE network connections through most of the house. So it's kind of nice you can use these adapters wherever you like and uh, they support not a super amount of uh, watts, but enough to run the Atmo tube, the screen, the Raspberry Pi, uh, everything that you need. These are oh, pulling it out here. It's 2.4 amps at 5 volts. So, how's that? About 15 watts, which is plenty. And you can see you keep the Atmo tube plugged in all the time. If you do this, you'll see a lot better results. I had attempted running it um, not charging all the time. But number one, it's a pain to uh, monitor when it needs to be charged. But I see a much better connection between the uh, Atmo tube and the Pi itself when it's plugged in all the time. They're showing you that uh, that adapter, it's USB-C, and it gives you network. Pretty nice. These Raspberry Pis have built-in Wi-Fi, so it's not necessary, but definitely convenient for any other device that does not. So we're just booting it up, and this is it's been running for about a month, and. Um, great results. Uh, pretty interesting to see your air quality make some, you know, not a lot of money, but uh, contribute. So we're going to open up the Atmo tube program first. And then from there, we're going to bring up our uh, 
selection and we're going to tap the icon put it into split screen and once we have that open we're going to open the planet watch app next go into our uh, sensor may or may not need to enter your pin this one's set up and been running but so uh, this didn't need to And there you have it. The uh, Atmo tubes connected. Planet Watch is getting data and sending data. Appreciate y'all watching.